Okay. Happy, happy. Okay. Uh, we, we at least have a chance here. Okay. There we go. So we're going to hit on a couple topics quite quickly here. Um, one is going to be uh, one is going to be issue tracking. Another is going to be sort of monitoring uh, bonded progress as it comes in, uh, bug counts and uh, traceability um, of your system. Okay. So um, basically, finding defects uh, is is challenging. There's often a lot of defects you're not aware of in your software. Um, and uh, eliminating those defects is very important for effective code quality and value to be delivered to customers. Um, but there's a lot of complexity associated with, with going from an initial code base, um, incremental though it may be, to a debug version of that code base that uh, is suitable for, for client interaction. Um, and uh, a lot of these, uh, this type of complexity has to do with defect reporting and tracking, um, uh, requests for changes uh, from the clients, and, um, and associated peer review processes. And um, we're going to be talking today about um, defect tracking in progress in a way that um, I hope will give some structure to this. And we're talking about the stages of a bug's life. So. If you look at folks who do software development um, for a living up there, um, you'll find a lot of attention to testing processes um, in um, medium and large scale firms and in many small firms as well, small software development firms. Um, sometimes that data is public. Um, this is data from NASA for three different space probes. And what it shows is uh, a a measure of number of defects located here on the, the y-axis. This is cumulative defects per thousand lines of code. And on the x-axis, we have weeks. What is this graph? What are a couple features of this graph that are worthy of note? If, if you had to come away with you know, two or three high-level sort of take-homes from this, what would it be? Uh, okay, over time, there's kind of diminishing returns. I like that a lot. So you may early on find a bunch of defects, but then it kind of starts to plateau out. You see that in, in this one as well. This red one um, uh, you know, shows a little bit of sign of abating, but it's not quite reaching the plateau. So, so good. That's one thing. Another? Another point? What's another thing that stands out for me? More defects found early on. Yeah. Okay, a lot of defects can be found early on, but how early is early? <coughs> so, well, this is a year. <coughs> so there's quite a few found in the course of a year, but a year's a long time. And perhaps to your delight, this class doesn't last for a year. Um, uh, so, so deep finding defects can take a while, and you know this is on very, very well controlled um, and and very important code bases. If these code bases are wrong, you know you may flush a billion dollars down the tubes because the spacecraft involved, which you spent years building up, designing, optimizing, testing, it ends up going, you know, a wall. It, it's not communicating anymore, and. and uh, had a major investment and you can't do anything about it. You can't go pay a service call on the spacecraft because it's up beyond Jupiter. Okay, what's, what's another feature though? Yeah. Uh, once they find one bug, it seems like they find quite a few. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's these kind of s s sort of stared nature of it it's, or staggered nature where, you know, for a while there won't be too many found then whoop, and then sort of not too many found, and then a, a whole series, they're on a roll. They get on a roll. What, what might that represent? Why might they be on a roll? Okay, yeah, it, it could. I mean, NASA might have bug parties. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, uh, uh, so so it's, it's possible they get together and have a real focus session of some sort that drives that. But there's another reason you see this. Good. Yeah, and, and, and related 
notion, you find new classes of bugs. You say like, oh, okay, so a CD5, where else might we see something like this in our code base? Where else we might have, where might we have made similar mistakes? And this is a very common thing, actually, in these code bases. You find sort of classes of bugs. You find the first instance, and then you generalize it and say, oh, there are these three other cases in the code base where we do similar things. We got to get on top of them. Um, and you'll see that sort of staggered nature in, in, in multiples of these uh, you know, across different projects. Finding defects is hard. Finding defects is not a uniform process. Finding defects can go on even after years. I mean, look at this one. Here we're out, out at week 289. You know, probably, probably out there uh, somewhere above five years, and we're still finding some, some defects. Perhaps to your secret delight, it's, uh, I'll just observe that this class doesn't last five years. Okay, um, so let's talk about the stages in a bug's life. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I introduced uh, this sort of diagram earlier, um, and I think it's a useful one. Basically, bugs have a, a life associated with them, and some of these categories are more easily observed than others. So the first and per perhaps most important category is undiagnosed bugs. These are bugs that are there, we just don't know about them. We're going to be focusing in a way not so long from now, probably be in the next... Uh, five or so lectures, where we're going to have a technique for estimating how big this is. How big is this group of undiagnosed bugs? How many hidden bugs are out there that we just haven't discovered yet? Um, and it's going to depend on bug parts. Okay. Um, uh, but next, there's, uh, there's bug reports that report uh, bugs as a result of testing, or this could be not only testing, but peer review. That also might find identify bug reports. And these reports are a start, but um, they include uh, a number of, of, of uh, limitations. Uh, they have uh, duplicates. They have outdated uh, defects, defect reports, based on incorrect understanding. In short, these include a lot of unsanitized bugs. You know, you may have three reports of the same bug. And if it's a prominent bug, that wouldn't be surprising at all. Or, you know, maybe this is a bug, someone's operating on an old version of the software, and they report something, and yeah, we knew about that, you know, four weeks ago, but that's been fixed since. It's just because they haven't updated their configuration. This happens a lot. You know, we have a, I'm associated with a commercial firm that, that some of our code transitioned out of lab, and we're selling it worldwide, and, and this, is, this is an ongoing issue. Um, uh, after sanitization, you get active bugs. So these are bugs which have been sanitized in the sense that we've identified that they're not duplicates, that they're meaningful bug reports. They seem to be about the current version of the system. They're current, um, and uh, and you know they're based on a sound understanding of the system. Okay, um, these are act what we call active bugs. But this does include bugs which are judged too risky to fix, bugs that are too minor to merit the cost to fix, or bugs that we don't have time to fix. Now, I note that I'm getting some clipping at the bottom of the screen. So with your, uh, with a pardon to you, what I'm going to